Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I think it's pretty fair to say that when it comes to video games nobody likes dying, nobody likes that feeling of failure, but there are some deaths that are much much worse than others, namely the times that you get killed in a bloody cutscene. Let's take a look at them today shall we, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 10 times that video games killed you in a cutscene. Number 10. BJ loses his head. Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus so roughly halfway through Wolfenstein II The New Colossus, Nazi slaughtering protagonist BJ Blazkowicz is brutally killed while the player is powerless to do anything but watch. Horrifyingly, the bulk of the scene, which is a public execution at DC's Lincoln Memorial, actually unfolds as a first-person interactive cutscene. The player is given a front row seat to watch Nazi commander Irene Engel hack away at their own neck before the perspective shifts to show her triumphantly holding the severed head aloft. But of course, Blazkowicz isn't dead for long, as the Resistance manages to collect his discarded head and bring him back to life by grafting his noggin onto the body of a bioengineered Nazi super soldier, giving him a whole host of physical upgrades in the process. Despite his speedy resurrection, witnessing BJ's death firsthand is surely the most traumatic moment in any Wolfenstein game, and that is really saying something. Number 9. Lucas Takes a Fall – Fahrenheit Quantic Dreams is 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 cult fan favourite Fahrenheit, aka Indigo Prophecy depending on where you played it, was wildly criticised for its rushed third act, which due to developmental issues was forced to speed through a number of character arcs and plot developments. Sadly, the most pivotal of all of these is the sudden demise of protagonist Lucas Kane, who actually dies about an hour before the end of the game during one of its many interactive cutscene set pieces. Players are tasked with rescuing Lucas's girlfriend Tiffany from the clutches of the villainous Oracle but even those who successfully reach her are powerless to avoid the Grim Reaper, as the Oracle collapses the platform the pair are standing on, sending both Lucas and Tiffany falling to their deaths. Though players might initially assume that they screwed up or something, this is exactly how the story is intended to play out, as Lucas is then resurrected by the AI collective known as the Purple Clan, who plan to use Lucas to fulfil their dreams of world domination. Again, this game gets pretty wild in the final stretch. Number 8. Bayonetta is creamed by a tanker. Bayonetta. Now, QTE sequences are near universally accepted to be the worst part of the original Bayonetta games, and in most titles, in all honesty, enough so that they mercifully didn't return in the sequel. Though there are numerous instances throughout the game where you can be killed by a QTE, perhaps the cruelest of all occurs during the balmy hardway level Route 666. At the end of the chapter's second verse, players will understandably assume that they've gotten a little breather to relax while a cutscene plays out, and uses it to introduce a car-shaped angel in suitably bombastic fashion. However, this car-shaped angel makes their appearance by careening through a tanker truck which is promptly catapulted in Bayonetta's face. Players who've put the controller down will likely be unable to hit the jump prompt in time, leading to the hilariously grim animation where Bayo here is turned into a red stain on the highway. Ouch. Number 7. Shepard is exposed to the vacuum of space – Mass Effect 2 So Mass Effect 2 trolled players big time by daring to kill off beloved protagonist Commander Shepard in literally the first 10 minutes of the game. The sci-fi sequel begins with the destruction of Shepard's ship, the Normandy, shortly after Shep forces Joker into a final escape pod and is then ejected into space, promptly suffocating in the process. Now, many immediately assumed that Shepard had basically been fired from the franchise without any player input whatsoever and the that a new hero would be joining the fray. Unsurprisingly, fans were pissed off for all of a hot minute. Thankfully though, after a few moments, this was revealed not to be the case, as we picked up two years later where Shep has been revived, almost as if though nothing has happened, as part of Cerberus's is, is, is Lazarus project, and one of the best games ever then unfolded. Number 6. The Ladder from Hell – Metro 2033 Metro 2033's Tower chapter features an especially cheap QTE inserted at the beginning of what seems to be a regular story cutscene. While climbing a perilous ladder, the action will suddenly be wrestled away from the player's hands for an in-game cinematic as the ladder begins to break away. But out of nowhere, a QTE prompt will also appear on screen which players have barely any time to respond to, and which upon failure will send them falling thousands of feet to their easy deaths. This isn't the only platforming QTE in the game, but it's certainly the most cruel and irritating, given how easily it's missed if you look away from the screen for even a few fractions of a second, because the timing window is that ungenerous. Number 5. Wanda gets obliterated, well twice, Shadow of the Colossus 
Shadow of the Colossus is an especially interesting case of cutscene death because it basically happens twice in the game's climax. After defeating the final Colossus, protagonist Wanda returns to the Shrine of Worship to find his damsel Mono, though as a result of his quest, he's become physically corrupted and possessed. Wanda is then met by Shaman Lord Amon, who orders that one of his men run Wanda through with a sword. Wanda dies in what looks to be a rather excruciating death, despite Amon calling it a mercy kill, but the malevolent entity Dorman quickly takes control of Wanda's body and mutates into a giant shadowy creature. The Dormin slash Wanda hybrid is only destroyed in a whirlwind of light which seemingly consumes them both, apparently giving Wanda a second demise. Thankfully though for Wanda, he's resurrected as a horned baby at the end of the game. So I guess that pain and suffering wasn't all for naught. Number 4. Jessica's Death by Wendigo – Until Dawn until Dawn's fourth chapter puts players in the shoes of Mike as he races desperately to rescue his girlfriend Jessica from a Wendigo, forcing players through an interactive cutscene obstacle course full of absurdly precise QTE prompts. The sequence touts around a dozen different button prompts with extremely tight time windows, and missing even a single one of them is enough to result in Jess's death a few moments later. As such, she's by far the hardest character to keep alive, with most players reaching the end of the sequence only to find her corpse thrown down an elevator shaft by the Wendigo with her jaw ripped out. Gnarly. To rub salt in the wound, the game will even flash back to show you some of the QTE-related goofs. Though Until Dawn is a game that absolutely relishes in toying with players and subverting their expectations, this section definitely delves into that is total bullshit territory. Number 3. Live, Die, Live Again – God of War the God of War games have basically done this to the point of self-parody, so much so that death doesn't actually seem to mean much in this series. Late in the original game, Kratos is killed when the God of War Ares impales him with a gigantic pillar from afar, forcing him to fight his way back from the underworld in order to finally defeat Ares. At the end of God of War 2's opening sequence, Kratos is killed once again, this time run through with the Blade of Olympus by a pissed-off Zeus, again requiring him to resurface from the underworld in order to enact bloody vengeance. The third and final death is admittedly a little more contentious, but at the end of God of War 3, Kratos impales himself with the Blade of Olympus in order to restore hope to the mortal world, much to Athena's chagrin. However, a closing glimpse of Kratos' blood trail suggests that he may have found a way to survive, and we have to accept that this is true, because he obviously returns for the 2018 follow-up with no clear explanation for his revival. And what a game it was. Number 2. Krauser Stabs Leon – Resident Evil 4 Resident Evil 4 introduced quick-time events to the survival horror franchise for the first time, and to call it uh, divisive is a bit of an understatement. Even if you manage to survive the ludicrously unfair QTE boulder, you'll face a much tougher struggle later on during the QTE battle against Krauser. Now, the fight is a cinematic knife duel, with players required to pull a number of exact, hurried multi-button prompts or risk suffering a quick, brutal stabbing from Leon's former comrade. Though the sequence is relatively short at just a few minutes in length, it's still extremely annoying to fail and have to start things all over again, especially as a ton of expository dialogue is dumped in between the prompts. Thankfully, you get to battle Krauser the good old-fashioned way later on down the line and put him down for good. And number 1. Mephiles Murders Sonic – Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 for many, 2006's Sonic the Hedgehog is best thought of a kind of hazy nightmare that never actually happened, right? Except, unfortunately, that it actually did, and one of its bolder decisions was to actually give its titular hero an in-game, albeit temporary, death. To the surprise of just about everyone, Sonic is legit murdered by the main villain of the game near the end of the narrative runtime, shot with an energy wave which instantly kills him. Though not a single living soul actually believed that this was the real end for Sega's inimitable mascot, it was still pretty jarring, with the remaining heroes forced to combine their Chaos Emeralds to bring him back to life and then defeat the big bad. Considering that we've all died as Sonic hundreds, if not thousands of times over the years, to see it happen through no fault of our own was, um, well, a bit weird to say the least, but not as weird as the kiss afterwards. Oh god, I've seen it again. Get it away. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 times video games killed you in a cutscene. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. Or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope that you're treating yourself well, my friend, both physically and mentally, because you deserve love, happiness, and 
and success we all do as human beings and do not let anything or anyone tell you otherwise okay i want you to go out there and absolutely smash your life goals today whatever they might be big love from me to you as always i've been jules you have been awesome never forget that and i'll speak to you soon bye